welcome to Coffee with Tyler, the show where we talk to banjoists around the world about all things music, banjo, and even maybe coffee. John is actually the first guest I think that's actually had coffee with me. So thank you, John. Welcome, John McEwen. Coffee with Tyler. It's hello. It's the name of the show, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, man, thanks so much for being here with us. I really, really appreciate it. Well, like I said to my mom, thanks for having me. Yeah. <laughs> so I uh, want to start off for a lot of the listeners out there that aren't familiar with you. We might have a couple stock questions just to get going here. How old were you when you started and how did you get into the banjo of all instruments? I was 17 and a half. I was playing guitar. Mm -hmm. I was playing things like uh, silly things, you know, like, uh, well, my brother had taught me things like, about how I did it. It was, it was a couple years before I could go. You know, etc. Oh, I also knew. And then, at 17 and a half, uh, I went to see something I'd never heard of. The Dillard's. They were playing a folk club in Orange County, California. And I didn't know what a Dillard was, but after Doug Dillard, uh, the, the announcer goes, and now, ladies and gentlemen, from Salem, Missouri, the Dillards. They okay. jumped on stage, and he kicked off Hickory Hollow so fast. I never heard music that fast. <laughs> and so precise and so perfect. And they were so funny. And I went home and took the fifth string off my guitar and put a first string at the fifth, uh, put a first string at the number five string. Okay. Yeah. And because I asked Rodney, what do I do? I don't have a banjo. I've got to play a banjo. He had me put a, he said, put a HO railroad spike in the fifth fret on the fifth, on the fifth string and put a first string there and tune it to that. And I did that, but I didn't know how to tune it. So I had to keep going back. <laughs> For six months, I didn't have a banjo. When I turned 18, I got my first banjo, and that's in the uh, Music Instrument Museum in Phoenix. On a, oh, yeah, yeah. I've been there. That's a cool place. Yeah, uh, It's in an exhibit I put together for them, Instruments on the Path to the Circle album. And uh, I am totally shocked that, that the uh, life I picked has worked out so well. Doug <laughs> Dillard, I hounded the Dillards for two years. Keep in mind, I'm 18. I'm going to school. I'm working in Disneyland in the magic shop. Okay. okay. And um, that was my dream job, by the way. Steve Martin and I were both trying to get the job at the magic <laughs> shop. The magic store. Wow, cool. Doing tricks all day, you know. Mm -hmm. um, That's awesome. And we did at 16 years old. But it was, wasn't until 17 and a half, 18, that music came along in the form of the banjo. Okay. And... It took me away. And Orange County was a good place to be taken away from. <laughs> and the Dillards did it. And Rodney Dillard's a, a dear friend now, the, the last Dillard standing. I got them inducted into the IBMA Hall of Fame. Thank you. Okay, good. Uh, Doug and Rodney and Mitch and Dean. And uh, it led to a relationship that's wonderful. And yeah. that got me into the banjo. So, and we're talking five string banjo, right? Yeah, five string. Five string. Uh, well, yeah. I, then I, I needed to get it on the radio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm 18 years old. You know, everybody's coming out of the radio that's between 16 and 20 years old. You know, that's something that's never been, like, written about, but should be. Look at the impact the 16 to 21-year-olds had. Buffalo Springfield, Richie Valens, uh, uh, along, the birds, a long list of people. I heard a Birds record on the way to college. Here I am playing the banjo every day in the music room, not going to class, just <laughs> rehearsing, playing eight hours a day sometimes. Right. And one day on the way to school, I heard this. Huh, you might remember this song. <laughs> heard this coming out of the radio. This is a musically hip audience, right? Right. So I'll just play part of the lick. Doesn't that take you back? Wait a minute. <laughs> Remember 
Remember that? Oh, yeah. was on the radio and I knew the bass player had been a mandolin player in a San Diego bluegrass group called Scottsville Squirrel Barkers, Chris Hillman. Okay. And he was, he's on the radio. Maybe I can be. I didn't know then that Bernie Ledden was their banjo player. Little known fact that he was a Scottsville Squirrel Barker himself. And, uh, that meant I had to find a group. And I went out and <laughs> hanging out at the music store, McCabe's Guitar Shop in Long Beach. Oh, yeah, yeah, McCabe's. Cool. In Long Beach. This was oh, not yeah. the one in Santa Monica. This was a, okay. a, an extension that started for a while. Okay. And uh, gotcha. Les Thompson was one of the guys. He was a 15, 16 year old mandolin player. And we started a bluegrass group that was basically trying to be like the Dillards. And that lasted nine months and probably nine gigs, you know, <laughs> eight of them being pizza parlors. But right, right. Yeah. bluegrass tonight, you know, Wilmore City Moonshiners is what we were called. Our big job was opening for Hoyt Axton at the Golden Bear. That was a big, Golden Bear was the hot club in Southern California. Wonderful place. We broke up. I played with Michael Murphy, uh, Michael Martin Murphy, for six months. Didn't like it. I didn't like the, the it was called the Texas Twosome, and I, I wasn't from Texas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. His buddy was. Okay. But, uh, then I quit doing that and worked with Andy Williams for a month, uh -huh. sitting in front of the drummer, Jimmy Gordon. He played on some of our earlier records. Jimmy Gordon was the number one, two, or three drummer in L.A., 21 years old. Played on one out of three records in the Hot 100. Wow. And he played on the Dirt Band's first album, third album, and fifth album. Okay. And uh, nobody in the Dirt Band played drums really good enough at the time. Yeah. But... Right. Uh, he was great. How, so, how did you guys get started? How did the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band get started? When, when about was that? At that guitar shop, I'd gone from being a solo guy, playing the clubs, trying to do my eight songs that I knew or nine or whatever. Right. When everybody was trying to figure out what to do. You know, can I play a few songs? And, uh, <laughs> you play the hoot nanny with no money. That hasn't changed, has it? Right, I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, and uh Russ and I had that group, broke up. I I got some other work. Anyway. Um and he called me up one day and said, Hey John. The guys at the music store are putting the band together. I'd like you to be part of it. What do you? And I said, "What are you calling yourselves?" He goes, "Nitty Gritty Dirt Band." Oh yeah, I heard that was happening. They'd done five shows, okay. you know, and uh, I wanted to do the sixth one, and okay. I had to. I had to uh, make sure though, so I auditioned them. <laughs> Pretty arrogant. They didn't know I was auditioning them, but I. Had him, well, he left. Let's have him learn my song, Dismal Swamp. And uh, the first banjo tune, my brother wrote with me. He was uh, the guitar player. Okay. And they learned it. I entered the Topanga Canyon banjo contest, and I won. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the only contest I've ever will enter. <laughs> Got to end up on top, right? And, yeah, there you go. Yeah. But since I won, I figured, hey, I got the group. I got the group that I need. These guys will do. And we didn't know what we were doing at all. This was this was August or just July of 1966. Okay. And the only way I can feel that old is by looking at the uh, 
my white hair. Uh, <laughs> it's still black inside, really. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. right. And uh, it just comes out white. And uh, <laughs> so I had the group. And I wanted to get the banjo on the radio. Oh, how am I going to do that? We made our first album. And the first single was Buy For Me The Rain, okay. which had five string, five string banjo all over it. I played it with a mute. Oh, and, okay. Yeah. And uh, gave it that that kind of special sound. But it was now, a banjo. <laughs> it was. Now, what, just out of curiosity here for some of the banjo nerds listening, what kind of banjo was that? Was it an open back or more of a master tone style? Do you remember? Hang on a second. I had my Ludwig banjo at first. I had a okay. Ludwig converted fist string neck. At yeah. first. Wow. And that's what's hanging in the museum. But I'd worked my way up, uh, made enough, saved enough, whatever, to get a master tone, a regular bow tie master tone sure. that, that I used on that. And uh, I had to think of the, the instrument. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the one I was going to use years later on the Circle album, but two, two weeks before the sessions, it got stolen in Miami. Ah, okay. And uh, so I had to buy a crummy RB800 and on the way to Nashville. But uh, back to the first album, Right. there was a, Buy For Me The Rain was out there. And it was on the radio. I was like, we're going to be rich. Uh, ha, ha, ha. Uh, we might pay the rent, is what I should have said. Uh, and that worked out. The first album was kind of a mishmash. It had a bunch of people from uh, musicians, session players. But it had us a lot. I was, I was on most every cut, I think. But uh, Jimmy Gordon was, I remember the producer saying, we got Jimmy Gordon. Well, who's that? Well, I sure found out. And that later went on to see him occasionally. And like I said, in Las Vegas, uh, playing in Andy Williams orchestra. Yes. Yes. You no know, <laughs> playing. He, he put a record on, I went to audition for the job of uh, playing with Andy and he put it, well, let's see if you can play along with this. Sorry about that. Well, let's see if you can play along with this. And he puts on Stevie wonders for once in my life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm sitting there going, what am I going to play? I'll play the banjo. Oh, okay. Well, thankfully, it was in a key that I could go. Oh, yeah. the record after about 30 seconds and said you got the job hey there you go <laughs> i thought i was gonna be fired before i was hired and it put me <laughs> in las vegas for a month in front of jimmy gordon and i watched jimmy learning how to play the piano making oh. three finger chords da 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 because uh, 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 he is a drummer and a piano is a percussion instrument much like a banjo could be considered a percussion yeah. instrument Sure. But, and then fast forward four albums in a few years, I, Jimmy Gordon had played the piano on Layla. Hey, I, yeah, wow. Little known fact. Fun fact, yeah. The, the piano player, that solo in the middle that's just killer. Yeah. He played the drums, he overdubbed the drums and he played the piano. And, uh, wow, I didn't know that. That's cool. Neither did the Dirt Band. Yeah, <laughs> we were on the road in in uh, seventy four or five, and I told him, "Hey, you know we're getting close to Memphis, and Jimmy Gordon's playing with Hoyt Axon and Joan Baez. We ought to go see him. I'd like to talk to him. You know he played the piano with Layla, and they go, he did not. He played the drums. Well, yeah, he played the drums too, but he played the piano solo on Layla. He did not. Look, I'll bet you fifty dollars." <laughs> and they went for it. We went to the sound check. Hey, Jimmy, it's good to see you. How you doing? Blah, 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 blah. 
And uh, my bandmates here don't think you played the piano on Layla. And I've got $50 on it that says you did. And he just looked at me and them and he went. And he went over to the piano and the stage crew, everybody gathered around and he played that beautiful solo. Oh, yeah, yeah. And Jeff Hanna did not pay me for 35 yeah. years. <laughs> I finally shamed him into it by putting it on the internet. The internet yeah, came. Yeah. Out. Here's your $50. Yeah. <laughs> that is a great story. Wow. <laughs> anyway. So That's great. The Uncle Charlie album was our fifth album. Okay. And I've been playing the banjo. I play some four string styles like. A, yeah. Show us that. You know, um, kind of getting through it. Like. Tuning, tuning this. See. Like. Sadie Green was a vamp of New Orleans. Oh, sorry. Sadie <laughs> no. Green was a vamp of New Orleans. She had more men than the Navy had Marines. Oh, wait, wait. When she starts to vamp, oh, gee, mama, mama, kind of rose on me. All men would tear their hair out. Oh, you younger men, beware now. <laughs> you know, and it was really a fun thing to play that. I didn't sing it. Yeah, that's great. Little... And that was on album three and four, music like that. Okay, okay. When we got to album five, we broke up after doing Paint Your Wagon. Okay. We spent four months on the set uh, to do one song. Uh, hand me down that can of beans. Uh, and we got back to L.A. and Jeff said, I can't stand Ralph and Bruce and whatever. I'm going to let's break the group up. <laughs> and that's when I ended up playing with Murphy. I mean, okay. uh, excuse me, not with, with uh, not Murphy. That was before the dirt band. Yeah. yeah. Um, by the way, I played on Carolina in the Pines. You oh, know, really? that, huh? okay. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. You know that, uh, yeah, I did. That was a, uh, I, it's fun to hear that lick every now and then. Yeah. You know? Yeah. She came to me, said she knew me. Yeah. So Very fun. cool. Nice. Huh. You know, I met you at the Hall of Fame. Uh, Which one? I don't remember the year. It was uh, 2009, maybe. Country Music Hall of Fame? The uh, uh, Banjo Hall of Fame. Oh. <laughs> yeah. A little bit. I don't know, though. I was with Ray Price for eight years, and I was around that scene a lot, too. So maybe we ran into each other there. But I do remember getting to play with you at a uh, lobby in a hotel. Did I start? We... No, you were oh, amazing. Good. It was <laughs> – and we had a good time and everything. And uh, you invited me good... to play with you. Was it good for me, too? Yeah, I think so. You were smiling a couple times. <laughs> no. But I we got to play together in Oklahoma somewhere with you had a young mandolin player with you. It was really terrific. A uh, really young kid. Um and I came out and we did a couple songs together and then I met your son Nathan through that. Oh, uh-huh. And uh we did some stuff when he comes through Texas. He'll call me sometimes to do a couple things like at Green Hall or things like that. And he's fun, man. I uh, I was just curious so I, I know you have some kids. Are are any of them musical besides Nathan, or do you have any other musicians in the family? Well, Jonathan's an incredible guitar player, singer. Yes, and, Jonathan. Uh, yeah. He's working at his own career, mm -hmm. as is Nathan. They're available on the internet. That's great. Uh, under Jonathan McEwen, Nathan McEwen. Yeah. I wish they'd pick something like a different name so they could have not get confused with me. I'm, I, I told them. <laughs> It's a tough thing, jeez. Uh, <laughs> it's funny. Yeah. I mean, it, it's terrible. I, I don't mind it myself, but for them, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nathan, Nathan Starr might have been better. Let's there see. you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, you know I what his to... name? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed getting to to play with with Nathan. He's he's a great guy and great great singer player. 
Uh, that's that's really cool. Now I have to ask you this too, since we're this is through the American Banjo Museum, and there's a lot of banjoists watching this probably. How do you like to set up your banjo? Do you have a? Are, are you pretty easy going? Do you like to just kind of play whatever, or are you one of these people that really has a preferred bridge height and light strings or heavy strings, or do you really care about any of that? I have a rule. I change strings when they break. Hey, there you go. <laughs> Somehow I had a even, feeling you'd say that. Unless it's an even year. <laughs> right, right. There you go. Well, that's good to know. And you play but, on your master tone still, and there's a good time I, there. I am very proud of the fact that Janet Deering thought I deserved to have a, a Deering model banjo. It's, yes. I uh, used my Florentine. A lot of people are familiar with that banjo. Right. I, I used that for years on the road, but it started getting chewed up, you know, yeah. <laughs> like airlines and, oh, I'd open the case and then a little piece had broken off and oh, I'll save that. Then I'd lose it and yeah. <laughs> I'll glue it back on. I'd never glue. It's, it's like, it, it's just oh, chewed up. And Janet come, comes up, John, would you like to have a, and I said, sure, if you want to do what I want. And she did. She, uh, oh. the Scruggs tuners. <laughs> Are really cool. The yeah. tuners that I wanted are on there. The fifth string uh, HO railroad spikes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> are facing the right direction so the string doesn't pop out if you hit it too hard. Exactly. Uh, uh, the fifth that string has a separate nut rather okay. than going over the fret. Right. You know, when it goes over the fret, it's just not as good. It's just, yeah. And, yeah. and it Buzzes. works good that way. Let's see, what else? It's a... Uh, yeah, sounds It great. really sounds a lot like my Florentine. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a... <laughs> ah, come on. <laughs> ah. <No>. <laughs> the pressure, the pressure. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like that little, that little hangout there, you know? Right, it's the, right. That's one of Earl's yeah. tricks. You familiar with that trick? Yeah, but let's let's. A lot of people watching this probably aren't. Let's talk about Earl. Using the fingernails of your left hand yeah. to ride the string, or going down, like he would go. You know. Yeah. He on triple crank. He wouldn't just go. He'd go. Ah. Yeah. And uh, it's like going all the way up. Yeah, you can hear it a lot better that way. Yeah, and Lonesome Road Blues. See? Yeah. And then up to the high part. Even on, I think, on Shuck in the Corn. Uh, he grabs him, does a little bit of that. You know, it's, it's really cool. It gives a, cool. Lot, of, a lot of personality to the note. You know? Yeah. Now, now, did you learn that from Earl himself? Yeah. Or did you just, yeah, I see. I took him with him yeah. one time. I said, Earl, what's that groove in your middle finger right there? The <laughs> fingernail on your left hand. Oh, well, sometimes I use my fingers to ride the string. <laughs> And maybe I've been using it too much this week, you know. <laughs> Very cool. That's I like the inlays on that too. Those are some beautiful inlays. Neat. It's a beautiful banjo. They, they wow. made, uh, it's got my name on it right here, under the. Oh wow! And uh, they did the inlay I wanted. Yeah. And made it gold. Nice maple back. Yeah. All that. Beautiful. And. Uh, Thank you, Janet Deering and Greg. <laughs> Wonderful people. Boy, they make a fine banjo. Uh, they do. 
they make really good ones and and they're good time banjo yeah is that other one i have here i mean that, this is a great banjo for a beginner a new player you know i want to play the banjo does it cost very much and uh yeah it can cost your life if you're not careful yeah watch out yeah <laughs> absorb but uh yeah, this good. is a banjo the good time four or five hundred dollars <laughs> It sounds so much like a banjo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's buried in there. You know, it's got all this. I'm playing with my nails right now. That's great. And uh, it, it really cuts like a knife. It, it's not that good if you get more than, more than one other instrument, you kind of go, Somebody playing the banjo, you know, it's it's quiet. Yeah. If you have two guitars and a mandolin, it's, it's not for a bluegrass band, but it's it's great to learn on. Yeah, yeah, great. And the neck, I feel like I'm doing an ad for Deere. <laughs> I That's am funny. in the sense that this is why I endorse this banjo. Yeah, I see. It. Okay. Uh, it's my name's on there somewhere. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, That's great. The neck is absolutely perfect. I started with a K banjo. Oh, yes. yes. $75. The neck is K. Yeah. And uh, it's like, you know, it's like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyway, yeah, sounds great. It's all there. Where were we? So well, much bad. I didn't no, expect this is, this is great. So we we got to ask you a little bit about the Circle album. Sure. Because that, I mean, that's one of the albums. I mean, everybody knows that. Can you just... Well, everybody in your world. <laughs> well, okay. But I, I mean, it's that's a big, big deal. And um, I would just love to hear from, you know, your perspective, just kind of how that all happened and maybe any kind of stories you can remember about the recording process or... Well, it comes up all the time. And oh, it's coming up right now. Look at that. <laughs> Boy, they spent a lot of money on production. Oh. Uh, <laughs> That's great. Man. Earl Scruggs came to see us because of his song, Randy Lynn Rag. You familiar with that, Randy Lynn Rag? Yeah, yeah. And uh, I recorded that without knowing Earl. I didn't know Earl. I wanted to know him. I saw him in 19. 65 before the dirt band my brother and i made our way around the country on a business business trip for my dad so we could get to the grand old opry we got there on a saturday night it was sold out and i couldn't get a ticket but the north windows were open it was hot august summer and the windows were up you know the windows i mean the, yeah, the old north, style, north side yeah. of the ryman the colored window yeah, yeah. and right when i looked in this is really incredible to me that I have in this life that I picked. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Available on Amazon, a, right? I have a book called The Life I've Picked. It's on Amazon. Okay. And okay. I'm so glad I did. But right when I looked in that window, Lester Flat goes up to the mic and says, Earl and I would like to bring out Mama Maybelle Carter to do the Wildwood Flower. Ooh. Then I almost passed out. I was like, yeah, really? Oh, crap. <laughs> They're here. I had no idea. They did Wildwood Flower and then Flint Hill Special after that. And, uh, wow. and I said to myself, arrogant teenager that I was from California, someday I'm going to record with those people. I don't know what or how. I didn't have a group and uh, no hope other than... Uh, I was a big fan, Carter Family album, Songs of the Famous Carter Family by Flatt and Scruggs had come out a couple years earlier and I fell in love with Carter Family music. Maybe it was because it was easy. Maybe it was because it was different. Maybe it was because it was because it was Carter Family. <laughs> it's true, yeah. It's great. And so I wanted to meet, Maybe nothing. I couldn't meet Maybell or anybody. I was just a geek. You know, and we went we went away, and I was thinking about that. Then the dirt band started. Then, well, 
maybe someday. And I recorded one of Earl's songs, Randy, Randy Lynn Rag. You know that song? Here, I'll play a little bit of yeah, that recording. Well. I tried to do it on the Uncle Charlie album, which was our, our um, Uncle Charlie was our fifth album. Okay. And a lot of people relate to that. It had, that was a, another banjo on the radio, Shelley's Blues. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. That was really fun. Started with five string frailing and D. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> just really loud. Just a banjo and the vocal. Then the halftime drums would come in and, and we created country rock. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> our version of it. Right. There were others at the time. Sure, but, sure. uh, I was trying to record Randy, Randy Lynn Rag for the album, and my take, I went through six takes, and they all kind of sucked. Uh, everybody's sitting down, playing, and my brother was producing, and he said, you know, you need an audience. Everybody get out in the studio. Set the mics up like this. Do da 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 And so he brings them out in the studio, and it starts the song. Yeah, playing it live. I play better. And I love this part. Air banjo. And uh, that's great. <laughs> That was heard by Earl Scruggs. I didn't know it, but his sons, Gary and Randy, were were following us. Gary Scruggs is the only, only guy that ever caught the fact. He said to me one night, is that Jimmy Ibbotson singing Bojangles on the last two verses? Nobody knows that. <laughs> we do now. They do now, huh? Yeah, but, do. but yes, it is, because it needed a high harmony, and Jeff can do high harmony. And those guys sounded like as good as the Everly Brothers when they did. But wow. Earl comes to see me. And if you want to run that video I sent you, this would be a good time for it. Okay, we'll get our production team on. 1970, Vanderbilt University, the Dirt Band's first time, first time in Nashville. We're playing Vanderbilt. And Gary told me later that, I was going to take Daddy to the Opry that night because that's where he was wanted to go. And I said, hey, Daddy, the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band's in town. You want to go see him? Oh, yeah. I'd like to meet that boy that played played Randy Lynn Rag. And uh, wow. so that was that that song was the door opener that brought this to life when Earl Scruggs, my brother, captured this on video.
<laughs> you talk about pressure. Man. Uh, wow. Hello, Mr. Scruggs. It was yeah. it wasn't pressure. It was it was and it wasn't. That's great. Yeah, the Circle album, though. I mean, uh, for anybody listening right now, if you haven't heard that, will the Circle be unbroken? That's a timeless. That's an out. That, let's. Can you show that again? Yeah. <laughs> what you're talking about it? <laughs> oh man, it's uh. No oh, wait, it's upside down. There we go. That's better. Good at any angle. Any angle, right? <laughs> Backwards, forwards, upside down. Yeah, that's the album you guys need to hear if you haven't heard that. It's a really an amazing album. And this album, episode six of the Ken Burns Show. Did you see the Ken Burns documentary? I did. I did. Loved it. And uh, episode six was called Will the Circle Be Unbroken? And that show, that show aired in September. And... For the last six months, the Circle Lounge has been number one on three different Amazon charts. Right. It's uh, amazing. Bluegrass and traditional country and special projects. That right. might mean that it sold nine copies for each chart. But, <laughs> hey. but number one's number one. <laughs> yeah, and it was great to see you on that documentary, by the way. That was, you did a great job. It was, that Thank was awesome. You. I, hope, I hope people out there listening, if, if you haven't seen that, the Ken Burns uh, country music documentary, be sure to see it. It's great. It, uh, I, I learned a lot and I've been around country musicians quite a bit and it was, uh, really an eye opener. And so anyways, I'll yeah. plug that too. We're going to plug all kinds of stuff today. Your book, we can't forget about the book. You already showed that, but let's bring that out again. The life I picked, right? Is that, here it comes. Oh, there it is. <laughs> and that's on Amazon also. Yes, sir. And Amazon. the thing about it is, um, Nitty-gritty, yeah. It's gone, it's back up to number 35 on the Amazon book chart. 35 and 75 on another one. It's been out two years, but nice. it's really uh, Henry Diltz. You ever heard of him, the photographer? He took, he took okay. the cover picture in exchange for a banjo lesson. <laughs> hey, there you go. <laughs> oh, and I, you know, I think our our museum gift shop carries that book also. Oh, good. If people are at the American Banjo Museum, stop in, maybe buy a copy there. Then I'll come over and sign it. Yeah, come on. Yeah, just. <laughs> hey, where, where are you living right now? Um, in Florida. In? Florida, okay, cool. Tampa area. All right, nice. And uh, that's a, it's a good thing. It's yeah. close to an airport that nobody uses. <laughs> There, hey, now that's nice. Yeah, I know but, I'm in San Antonio, and and it's not too bad flying out of San Antonio. That's that's a good well, thing. I used to be in Dallas. That was the tra the traffic is is down ninety five percent. Right. Yeah, I'm sure. But uh, wow. Yeah, that's yeah, that's crazy. Speaking of all that, how how are you doing during this time? This uh, COVID nineteen time it has. I mean, I'm sure all your gigs are are canceled and all that kind of stuff. Uh, are you doing much? The first gigs are coming up now, and uh, I'll be in Nashville, Indiana on September 5. Okay. Uh, that's a wonderful place. Also, Grand Rapids on September 4th. And there's some others that are coming in. And how am I Good. doing? Uh, you know, my mom was a real survivor. She went through, like many of our parents, our age, whatever, went through the Depression, World War II, all that stuff, nothing. They had nothing, you know, Right. a lot of people. They had the World War II, World War II. Oh. Right. And all we're, being, all we're being asked to do is to binge watch TV shows. Yeah, sit at home all day and practice banjo. Practice. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, I, let's see, I've cleaned my garage five times now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I know, I know. Gonna start putting stuff in it just to mess it up so I can clean it out again. Right, right. I tell you what, man. I do okay. Doing your interview is a, a good thing for me. I have a Facebook live show that I do every week. Yeah, let's talk about that because I've I've noticed that you've yeah that's been great. I've peeped in a couple times. That's really fun. So so when is that? Well, I haven't determined the next one. I think it'll be Thursday at seven. Okay. Uh, I don't know how soon you're going to put this up, but. You can yeah. find out by going to my Facebook That's music right, yeah. page, John McEwen Music, not the John McEwen Music. Okay. Not the personal page because I right. can't. It only takes five thousand, and I can't 
can't use right. it. I got more than 5,000. Hey, whoa. 5,002. Well, <laughs> I've got friends I haven't even used yet. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, I'll let, you know, if, if uh, you listening out there, if you're on Facebook, check out John McEwen Music. And once a week or so, is that right? Once a week, you, you do that? The next one, I think, will be next Thursday, yes. Okay. And I go through Dirt Band history a little bit, my history okay. a little bit, people I've played with, things I've produced. Uh, I show a music video that, uh, or I show some footage that I've collected over the years. I've got like, 250 film clips from uh, various things. We're like the like this Earl Scruggs thing you just showed. Yeah, yes. and uh, and it's really fun. And and answer questions, and I tell stupid jokes. You know, uh, even I, I don't have anybody stopping me. So why not? <laughs>